Welcome to the 1990 Motocross Championship. Welcome to round one of the U.S. Outdoor Motocross Nationals at Gatorback Raceway in Gainesville, Florida. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Huffman. Earlier, we talked to the riders and asked them if they preferred outdoors or Supercross racing. I, I like Supercross a lot and, uh, you know, I like outdoors a lot, so uh, it's just another day of racing. Uh, I enjoyed racing so much, it doesn't matter where we're at or if we're Supercross or we're outdoors. It's just always fun for me. I like the Suzuki 125 a lot. Um, and uh, I like the outdoors, so I think the 125 and, and me go real real good together. Um, I like it. I like going fast. Indoors, it's really slow and technical and smooth and everything. And outdoors, you hang it out a little more. And I like doing that a little bit more, but uh, I like them both equally. And so heat number one of the 125 class here under a hot Florida sun underway. And look at these guys go. You've got uh, 40 riders. This is a 30-minute plus two-lap moto. They go wide. It looks like... Kudrowski, number one, taking the green flag. That's Kudrowski out in front on the factory Honda. And right behind him, the Frenchman, Jean-Michel Bale from France, six foot one, and he is going after Kudrowski. The Kudrowski is in front. Mike Kudrowski, Canyon Country, California, factory Honda. This guy's tough. Six foot one also, 155 pounds. He likes to surf, jet ski, and go fishing. And right now he's fishing for a checkered flag, but look at Bale, the Frenchman, closing in on Kudrowski. Kudrowski, formerly on the Kawasaki, this is the first year with a factory Honda. Takes an outside line, Bale goes to the inside. A lot of sand on this track, it's a North Florida track. There are very hard, rough sections. We understand they have, they have uh, graded one of the early turns. That could be a problem. But there's Kudrowski, looks behind him, Bale closing in on him. Flying over the jumps here at uh, Florida. Gator Back Raceway, Gainesville, Florida. Bill West, the promoter. I'm Larry Huffman on the microphone. Mike Kudrowski, he's got some impressive credentials. He was one of the uh, members of the U.S. Motocross to Nations team in West Germany in 1989. The Americans won it for about the umpteenth year. So he's used to international pressure, and that's what Bale is putting on. Although Bale is dropping back a little bit, there's the go faster flag, or the one lap flag, tell him to get it on. 30 minutes plus two motos. Here's the action back in the pack, and not much happening back there. Eric Keogh is starting to move up. Keogh is carrying number 19 in mid pack at this point. But right now, look at the lead these two gentlemen have on the other riders. Michael Kudrowski. The stars and stripes against the French tricolor. Bale, there's a look at that, that jump. And not much happening on that. That's mid-pack. Gives you an idea of how high they're, go they're going. But the action out in front. Kudrowski comfortably. Look at Kudrowski's line. Tends to go very wide and somewhat flat-tracking it around the turns where Bale sticks to the inside. And traditionally, you'll find the European riders don't get as spectacular as the Americans. Bale is about the... Uh, has had more luck than just about any other European racing in Supercross and on the outdoor tracks in America. Now Bale taking a wide line on that one, going up high on the berm. But it's still Kudrowski in front. Look at the tough, hard track. Rutz developing, the suspension taking a tremendous pounding here at North Florida. It's uh, early April, hot April sun beating down on these guys. Remember, long motos, 30 minutes plus two laps. Jean-Michel Bale continuing to put the pressure on Kudrowski, but so far, Kudrowski has withstood that pressure very well. Bale, one tough cookie. 125 world champion back in 1989, 250 world champion in 1989. 125 and 88 and 250 and 89. He said, I'm coming to the States. I want to take on the Yanks. Okay, now getting close to Kudrowski. They go up the uphill out of our sight. 
And it looks like Bale has taken the lead. Passed him out of sight of our camera, and Jean-Michel Bale has gone out in front. Can Kudrowski catch him? There's Kudrowski now going to the inside. Trying to cut off a foot here, a foot there. Bale, six foot one. Now living in Redondo Beach, originally from Moscow, France. He is a mountain climber, he's a surfer, and he loves snow skiing when he's not riding. Now, look at, look at Kudrowski come up on the inside. And Bale starts to move away from him. Both these guys are over six feet. The same uh, height as, as Mike Bell, the 1981 Supercross champion. Traditionally, the Supercross riders, the Mark Barnett's, the Bob Hanna's have been short and either stocky or very wiry. These guys are wiry and big. They both weigh about 155 pounds, and they're both well over six feet tall. Bale, factory Honda under the tutelage of six-time world champion Roger DeCoster, the race manager for Honda, or actually an engineer, does not like to be called the race manager. He's a six-time world champion, got that, riding a Suzuki, but Suzuki didn't pick him up. After his career, Honda did, gave him a job as an engineer, and DeCoster is a very, very accomplished engineer and knows a lot about metal and uh, the breaking points of metal, which you need to know in Supercross. And so he has taken Bale under his wing, and Bale has profited, and so has Honda, American Honda. If you don't believe me, ask Kudrowski. Kudrowski's his teammate, but there is no love lost in these guys on the track. Bale, 22, Kudrowski number one. Meanwhile, back in the pack, it's uh, Jeff Matasevich, in, uh, in running in third place, we understand. And uh, Guy Cooper, the Oklahoma Flash, is running about fourth right now. But the attention on Bale, look at the suspension, the taking a pounding on this track. It's hard. In certain sections, a lot of sand. And you look at that sky, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's hot here in Florida. This is round one of the first moto of 1990-125 class. And Bale flying through the air with the greatest of ease. Looks around behind him, and Kudrowski staying about the same distance back. Bale started riding motorcycles at six years old. He raced at nine, and he turned professional at 14. Jean-Michel Bale from France, your leader. That's a lap rider, number 148. He's not in the running. The battle is between number 22, Bale, the Frenchman, and this young gentleman from Southern California, the desert of Canyon country, Mike Kudrowski in second, number one. He is defending 125 Outdoor Motocross Champion. Finished in the top five ten times with three wins, three seconds, one fourth, and three fifth place finishes in 1989. To take that number one place. There's number four, and that is Guy Cooper of Oklahoma, trying to make his way up through the pack. Cooper out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. He's number four. He switched from, from Honda, kind of a privateer, uh, switched from Honda to Suzuki in 1990, so he's riding a Suzuki this year. Interesting point about uh, Guy Cooper. He won the Florida Winter Series Championship in the 125 class back in 1987. That's Cooper, number four, on a Suzuki. RM Suzuki, the man, the uh, bike, oh, almost goes down. He had some problems earlier, we understand. The bike developed by Bob Hurricane Hanna, who's kind of taken Cooper under his wing and given him some in, in input and advice this year. But it is Jean-Michel Bale, number 22 in front, starting to lap other riders now. They move over as well they should. This guy's big, six foot one. Interesting, the crowd not getting behind Bale. He's a Frenchman. They'd like to see an American out in front. That's a lapped rider behind him on the yellow bike. The second place rider is number one, defending national champion Mike Kudrowski. Two laps to go. Now, if Kudrowski is going to do something, he's got to make his move now. He's got to try to force Bale into making a mistake. These are only 125. These guys are big, uh, si over six feet, 155 pounds, and it gives you an idea of how much power these little machines have. Ten years ago, a 125 would be lucky to put out 25, 26 horsepower, and now they're up in the high 30s, close to 40 horsepower range for a 125. That's an eighth liter rocket ship. A lot of power, very sophisticated suspension. A pair of Hondas out in front. Michelle, John Michelle Bale and Mike Kudrowski. Teammates, there's Cooper. Cooper's up to about uh, fourth place now. 
Matasevich is running third. Now Matasevich is Kodraski's old partner, last year on both on the Kawasaki's. Bailey, your leader, now opening up a lead. Now on Kodraski, and I think Kodraski is just about set. I'm going to settle for second and try to get him in the second moto. Remember, there's two motos now. This is the first moto, 125 class. Larry Huffman on the microphone at Gainesville, Florida. Gator Back Raceway, the pride of Bill West, the promoter here. Bale looking for the white flag. Doesn't seem to be making any mistakes. Doesn't seem to be getting tired. The crowd underwhelmed at his lead. Not cheering and cheering him on at all. They'd like to see an American out there. Preferably this young man, uh, Matasevich. Or check that, Kodrowski, number one. Kodrowski running in second. Matasevich, his former teammate, in third. And in fourth spot is Cooper at this point. But right now, all the marbles are being controlled by this young gentleman from France. From the wine-producing regions of France, Jean-Michel Bale has got a lap to go. Spelled B-A-Y-L-E. Some guys, especially from the South, pronounce it Bale. Mike Bale. It's Bale. And he is on the gas, lapping another rider. Here's a good look at the deep sand here at Gatorback. And there's second place, Kudrowski. Bale serving notice. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the 125 class this year. Former 125 world champion and 250 world champion. This guy's tougher than a $2 steak. And he's heading for the checkered flag, the final lap here at uh, Gainesville. And Bale is on the gas. He does not look tired. You don't see him making any mistakes. Not weakening at all. He is going for the goal right now. Checkered flag coming out. Bale rockets past another rider, slows there for just a moment, now heading for the checkered. Final lap. 125, the first 125 race of the 90s. Double jump. Heading forward, what can you say? He's just running away with this race with Kudrowski fading. Big crowd here at Gainesville. A lot of folks here, a lot of color in motocross. And Bale is getting some good American experience and some good American dollars, too, in winning this. This is the first moto now. 30 minutes plus two laps, 40 riders. And here's a checker, and Bale takes it. There it is. Jean, Jean-Michel Bale from France takes it. The first race of 1990. The first official AMA motocross. And Kudrowski will settle for second, go back and lick his wounds. And uh, Matasevich third. And here is Cooper, who we understand may have gone down earlier, limping across the line. Look at the, the pennants in the back of his tire. Whoa, he's got a lot of them in there. He went off the track and collected a bunch of pennants. He'll take fourth. Okay, Cooper, popular rider from Stillwater, Oklahoma. The results, Bale, Honda takes the lead, the win. Kudrowski second, Matasevich on the Kawasaki third. And Cooper fourth. And this is the 250 first moto, and there's Jeff Stanton, defending national champion from Sherwood, Michigan, number one. Next to him, number eight, that's Damon Bradshaw, the Yamaha factory rider. Then 13, the man everybody's watching today, Ricky Johnson. Number 17 is Larry Ward. Uh, Johnson, of course, last year injured his wrist right here at uh, Gatorback. He tangled with Danny Storbeck in a practice crash and was out of the race. Well, Jeff Ward in the race, Guy Cooper, Ronnie Tishner. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the first 250 National of 1990. And here we go, and who is it out in front? The dust clears and out in front. A change there. It looks like Doug Dubach, number seven, on the factory Yamaha to Southern California. Yes, let's not ignore Larry Ward. This sign up there, knock him out, Larry Ward. But it is Doug Dubach, number seven of Costa Mesa, California, in front. And he is being followed by, who is that in second? Looks like 32 Dennis Hawthorne. I'm not sure, no? Let's check when they come around. It's getting a little dusty here at Gatorback. Two first 250 National of uh, the first 250 National of 1990s. And uh, Ricky Johnson, that's the question mark. Right now, Dubach. 26 years old of Southern California. Dubach on the factory Yamaha in front. 
Keith McCarty, the brains behind that Yamaha factory effort for the past 12 or 13 years. The man who guided Hannah to his many, many victories is backing Dubak. And the Yamaha would like to see a win here. It's been a while. There he is, flying through the air, number seven, Doug Dubak, 26 years old out of Southern California. And Dubak opening up a bit of a lead here under the hot Florida sun. Let's check the riders behind him. There's Dubak, number seven. Well, he's got a, enough of a lead. We can't quite pick up the second place rider. We understand that Johnson is mid-pack. Ricky Johnson, there's second. That's 32. That's Hawthorne. I was right. And it looks like number six, Ronnie Tishner, a Florida native on the factory Suzuki running third. Yes, that's Tishner. Tishner trying to move up now. Number six, Tishner. Yamaha Mauta, the white Yamaha international colors. They switched from yellow a couple of years ago, a few years ago. That's number six, Tishner running in second. He's out of Florida. He's used to this hot Florida sun. And that's 13. Johnson has come out of nowhere and gone to third. I don't believe this. Ricky Johnson, multi-time national champion, has gone into third place. Bad start. He's got to be wondering about that wrist. This is where his career almost ended one year ago today. But Johnson is riding like a madman in third. And Ricky, one of the most intelligent riders, will stalk the riders in front of him until he sees a, a hole, and then he'll go for it. So Dubak here, Tishner landing very hard, Dubak, and there's Johnson in third. Stanton now moving up into about fourth place, I believe, at this point. Jeff Stanton, also a bad start. Now, the interesting thing about it, these riders will know that Johnson is running third because they'll get a sign from the mechanics as they go by the mechanics row. And there's a pass. Nope. No, almost. And the sign will say number 13 third. And these guys, it will be like lighting an Agena missile under their seats because they know that Johnson will close on him. Look at the height. These are 250 machines, ladies and gentlemen, putting close out close to 50 horsepower, the factory bikes. A tremendous power to weight ratio greater than that of a top fuel dragster. They only weigh about 214 pounds. I mean, these things are absolute rocket ships. Quarter liter rocket ships. Two wheel projectiles. There is Tishner. Good look at him on the yellow Suzuki out in second place. Douglas, I'm sorry. Yes, Douglas Dubak, number seven in front. Larry Huffman on the microphone. Larry Myers doing the live call here at Gainesville. And an excellent job, I'm sure. There's Johnson in third. Johnson taking an inside line. Cutting off a few feet, getting a little sideways there. Sacrificing a little speed for a little bit of uh, less ground to cover. Johnson now is getting these guys in his sights. And it is just a matter of time till Johnson will make a move. Whoop! Oh, uh, that is a block pass, ladies and gentlemen. And Tishner parked it right in front of Dubak. Dubak had a choice of running into him, putting them both down, or slamming on the binders. Dubak did the right thing and slowed down and let Tishner get out in front. And so Ronnie Tishner is out in front. Dubak in second, and Johnson grinning like a skeleton, the skeleton of death in third. There's Johnson on the inside. Nope, not quite yet. Mark Blackwell, the marketing director at Suzuki here today, and he is a former national motocross champion back in the early 70s. Takes a big interest in motocross, does Mr. Blackwell. There's your leader, number six, Ronnie Tishner on the factory Suzuki. And now Johnson's got him. Ricky goes around the outside, textbook pass, right around Dubak on the outside and sets it up and stays out in front, almost takes out uh, uh, Dubak's front wheel. Dubak wisely backs off, and now it is Ricky Johnson going after your leader, number seven, or uh, number six, Ronnie Tishner. 13, Johnson in second, seven, Dubak in third, but it is Ronnie Tishner now feeling the hot breath of Ricky Johnson in second. Stanton is up to fourth. We're not going to get away from this, this race, this battle between these young gentlemen. Everybody's wondering, can Ricky hold on for the whole moto? He almost ended his career here one year ago. Injured wrist, practice, crash, Danny Storbeck. Johnston was out for months. A lot of people wrote him off. And here is Ricky back. Watch, look at the crowd. Watch Johnson. Their heads move in unison as Johnson goes by. Got to be the crowd favorite. Ricky Johnson. You see a lot more 
waving on from the crowd in the previous 125 race. We had a Frenchman in front. And you've also got Ricky Johnson in this. Let's not discount that. Johnson is good. He's tough. Ronnie Tishner, 20 years old, out of Palm Harbor, Florida, six feet tall, 155 pounds, likes to swim and jet ski. A lot of these riders will jet ski. When they're not racing motocross, they use the balance and uh, the same type of balance as they do in, in riding a bike. A lot of power, and they're all into, into high-speed activity, whether it be motorcycles or jet skis or whatever. Look at Johnson on the inside. He's stalking him. He's going. He's got him. Johnson, a beautiful pass on the inside. Tishner did not expect that pass, and now it's Ronnie's turn to take a riding lesson from Ricky Johnson. Ricky Johnson, El Cajon, California. Got to be something in the water. You got guys like Brock Lover and Lachine and Johnson all from the same neighborhood just about. And Ricky is on the gas. Beautiful day here in Florida. Well-prepared track as usual. And there comes Stanton out of nowhere to take second, and now it's a whole new ball game, folks. Ricky Johnson in front, his teammate Jeff Stanton, number one in second. There's a distance between them. And Tishner is sitting in third. Stanton went around him so fast, uh, Tishner's head went around like the little girl in The Exorcist. And Tishner is go goodbye. Goodbye, Ronnie. Stanton is going to try to spoil uh, Ricky Johnson's return. There's Johnson. Number 13, big Ricky Johnson. Went to Japan with him in 1982 when I helped stage the first ever moto Supercross held in Japan. He was an 18-year-old kid, and he took the Japanese officials aside and said, this is how you start the race. And they were stunned. Johnson just said, this is how we do it. That's it. That's the way we want it done. They walked away, and one of the Japanese officials turned to me and said, in Japan, no young person ever questions the authority of an older person. And I said, well, you haven't met Ricky Johnson yet. Rick Johnson, number 13, out in front, formerly number one. And a lot of people thought he'd be out. He's 25 years old now. Out of El Cajon, 170 pounds, six feet one. Johnson is an avid surfer. He and David Stanfield, who's done a number of ESPN specials. He spent a lot of time with Stanfield. Stanfield's a surfer, too. He'll tell you Ricky's a darn good surfer, but he can make a lot more money riding motocross. Johnson surfs, snow skis, and water skis. Won the first five Camel Supercrosses in 1989 before coming to Gainesville and suffering that injured wrist. And Ricky was out for months, and some said he would not come back. Well, guess what? Ricky Johnson is back, folks. Johnson's having a fairly easy time. Stanton is staying far enough behind Johnson so Johnson does not have to sweat it too much. There's Johnson. Look at the crowd. Get behind him. They're so happy he's back. Johnson, the all-time Supercross race winner, surpassed Bob Hanna's record last year. And he is the winningest Supercross rider. Actually, the winningest, well, yeah, the winningest Supercross races. He's 128 going into this race, and, John, and Hanna 127. Johnson lapping riders almost at will. Looks strong. He's a tremendously talented rider, a lot of natural ability, but he also backs it up by some very intensive training. 1983, Johnson dislocated his, his uh, hip in St. Louis at an outdoor national. He said it was the most excruciating pain he has ever experienced. There was a fear at first that he was going to be paralyzed for life. That was in the summer of 1983. And Johnson came back. He was about 19 then. 25 years old now. Still got some years to go in Supercross and Motocross. Not much dust on this track, this well-prepared Gainesville track. Gatorback Raceway in North Florida, the beautiful city of Gainesville, is Ricky Johnson passing, lapping riders. This is where it gets dangerous, so when you come up on a rider, they call them squids, some of them. They don't know you're behind them and you've got the caliber of Ricky Johnson and suddenly you find yourself flat on your back because a rider has done something stupid. 
Johnson waves to the crowd. He'll showboat if he's far enough in ahead. It looked like he just turned and waved to the crowd. Might have been ripping off a tear off, but I think he was waving to the crowd. He responds, as most of the superstars do, to the accolades of a crowd, and they'll turn and wave at him. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ricky Johnson comes back with a vengeance and wins the first 250 National Motocross of 1990 here in Florida. Let's look at the results. Ricky takes it. We know that. And should be Stanton in second. Let's get the official results. Here it is. Let's look at Johnson in slow motion. Jeff takes second. Damon Bradshaw on the Yamaha finishes third. And here we go for the second moto in the 125 class. And there's Bale, a rider who decimated the competition in round number one. And here is a guy who's got to beat him, defending champion Mike Kodrowski. Kodrowski carrying that number one plate for Honda. But they ain't the only players. There's Roger DeCoster walking in front of our cameras. Uh, riders like Eric Kehoe, formerly on the factory Suzuki, now on a, a privateer, um, a privateer uh, Honda, EXO Sport and Pro Circuit Honda. And the riders getting set for the final 125 moto. Bale and Kudrowski, that's where the attention's going to be. But this young gentleman could also be the spoiler. He's called the chicken. That's uh, Jeff Matasevic. And that's an interesting story, how he got the nickname. We'll talk about that a little later. But here we go, the 125 moto number two. Kudrowski, number one. Bale, Jean-Michel Bale, number 22. Those are the numbers to watch. Here we go. A lot of riders, about 40 riders out in front. Looks like, I believe, that is Ty Davis on a Honda. Hard to tell from here. 26 out in front. As the riders go after the later. Now through the cottonwood trees and back down. That's number one, Kudrowski in second. We do know that. Kudrowski's got to stay in front of the Frenchman, Bale. And pass the privateer in front. Mike Kudrowski, number one, and that um, looks like Matasevic running in third. Kudrowski and Matasevic, formerly teammates on the Kawasaki team, now rivals Matasevic on the Kawasaki and uh, Kudrowski on the Honda. And there is Kudrowski, number one. And it looks like he's taking the lead. Yep, Kudrowski's out in front. Mike Kudrowski on the blood red Honda out of Canyon Country, California, just north of Los Angeles. And got a lot of experience in riding in hot weather. Number 26 running in second spot. And Matasevic trying to reel him in. And where's Bale? That's what the crowd here at Gainesville is asking. Where is the Frenchman? Look at the lead they've got. There they come, bouncing up like human pogo sticks. It's number 20 in second, and that is Matasevic. So Matasevic is coming second, running in second behind his former teammate, Mike Kudrowski. These guys keep winning. They've got to shorten their names. Through the sand pits here at Gainesville. No problem. The Honda running extremely well. They're all water-cooled now, liquid-cooled 125s. Blue jersey of Matasevic. You can see it in second as he just went by a moment ago. The Mataz attack, they call it. But uh, Skotrowski out in front now, number one. And look at the lead he's got. And there is Matasevich running in second spot. Kodrowski on that Ron Wood tuned Honda RC125. It's running well. There he is, no problem so far. Ron Wood is mechanic, looks like Rob Lowe, and hopefully that's as far as the resemblance is, just looks like it. And where is Bale? That's what the question the crowd is asking. Where is the Frenchman, Jean-Michel Bale? Matasevich, his former teammate, Kudrowski's former teammate, uh, second. They call him the chicken. There he is, right over the jump. Got that name when he was a young child, and he began chasing a chicken around the backyard of a neighbor's house up in Northern California, 
A bunch of the neighbors are sitting out drinking beer. And uh, suddenly, there's Cooper, number four, and he's running about fourth spot. And suddenly, the chicken dropped dead. Matasevich didn't lay a hand on him. The chicken died, apparently from a heart attack, being chased by a young boy. And that was it. The name stuck. They called him the chicken man, Matasevich. But here's Kudrowski in front. And there's Matasevich in second. And Cooper has gone to third. And where's Bale? Apparently, he is bailed out. No pun intended. Mike Kudrowski, six foot one, 155 pounds out in front, and there's Matasevich, and there's Cooper, and Cooper is giving a problem now to Matasevich. They're battling for second. Cooper, about five foot seven, five foot eight. He's whoa, look at him, he got him. Beautiful pass by Cooper on the inside, but Matasevich goes after him. And look at the crowd, they come alive. The first round, remember the uh, West, they look like a, a, an oil painting, the crowd, and now they're suddenly coming alive because you got some Americans out in front. Matasevich takes back second. Kudrowski in front. The battle right now is for second place. And Cooper has gone back into second. And Matasevich, the Kawasaki pilot, is running in third. Yes, that's how it is. Number four is Guy Cooper of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And there's Bale. Bale suddenly coming into the fray in fourth spot. He's fought his way back up. But remember, Bale has got to pass Kudrowski to take this very important first moto, first moto overall win of 1990. So, number one, Kudrowski in front. Number four, Cooper in second. Number two, 20, Matasevich in third. And Bale now in fourth spot. The Frenchman. Good camera work by our crew here at Gainesville. You're seeing some exciting action. Next up, the 250 final moto. There's Cooper, and he is pulling away from Matasevich. Matasevich, there is Matasevich, back about 25 bike lengths. This could be an interesting finish now. Kudrowski will wrap up the overall, but who will be in second? Guy Cooper, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second spot, and he is gaining on Kudrowski. Matasevich third, Bale fourth. A beautiful but warm day here under the hot Florida sun. First of April, 1990. Action at uh, Gainesville. The battle of the eighth liter rocket ships. Two wheel projectiles and men of steel on them. Larry Huffman on the microphone. John Reynolds, our engineer. Over the finish line jump goes Kudrowski. Cooper still holding on on that beautiful 1990 yellow Suzuki, and there's Matasevich on the Kawasaki, and there's Bale. Now Bale is starting to reel in the other riders. Could be an interesting race. Plenty of racing left. Bale, the number 22 Frenchman in fourth spot. But look at this. Look at Kudrowski. Look at uh, Cooper move up on Kudrowski. Look at there. There's your second place rider. Cooper about two seconds behind him. And Matasevich about the same distance behind Cooper. The suspension of the modern motocross machine, such an improvement in just the last few years. They'd said just four or five years ago they had so much power they couldn't get them to the ground. They couldn't get that power to the ground to make it work. And now they've moved the suspension up a few notches to equal the power output and so you've got a completely like a machine that is very very complete very fast handles extremely well there's Kudrowski number one lapping the other riders and in second spot is number four Guy Cooper in third spot is Matasevich and in fourth is Bale the final 125 moto and K Kudrowski will take it overall if he can just hang tough a little longer and hold on to that checkered flag The crowd always quiets down when there's not much of a race going on, and uh, the only and Cooper would like to change that. He'd like to make it a race. There's a distance between first and thec second. Kudrowski and Cooper. Gatorback has his interesting, interesting features. It's very sandy in certain places and very hard packed, like the old Saddleback Park course and others. No shade. There is no shade. Not a here at Gainesville. Whoop, a problem back in the pack. I, that's number eight is the only rider I can see with a single digit. Everybody's up. It was a low-speed right-hand turn that a couple guys went down on.
Notice the riders wear chest protectors, most of them do anyway. Protects their their backs, and their chest, their ribs, collarbones. Here's Kudrowski. There's Cooper, does not wear a chest protector, at least a complete chest protector. A lot of them don't like to wear them. They say it's too hot. Bale is running in fourth spot, trying to close on Matazovic. Cooper takes the inside line, a little rougher but shorter inside line. And there's the outside line for Cooper. Madrowski on the outside and uh, are inside on that last turn, and they're both taking about the same turn. There's a rider who had, has tangled with some tires. 249. Looks like we don't have a, num a name for him. But he is uh, going to retire, no pun intended. All right, here is Kudrowski. Moments away from the checkered flag in this final 125 moto here at Gainesville, Gatorback Raceway. <laughs> 30 minutes plus two laps. And there is Cooper ripping off a tear off off his face of his goggles in midair. A rear end bouncing around like a jackrabbit on whites. Used to be in the old days, a rider would come in with hands bleeding because the suspension just wasn't up to par. And now they say it's uh, not quite akin to driving a Cadillac, but certainly a lot, uh, a lot less of that shock gets through to the rider. It makes it a lot easier to race fast because the suspension is so good nowadays. Ruts developing here, and uh, there's a rider almost going down. Manages to stay upright. All the factory teams here in Forest. First race of 1990. First AMA National Motocross race of 1990. Next up, Ricky Johnson. Can he come back and do it again here at Gainesville, the 250 class? Stanton will have something to say about that, I'll bet you. Kudrowski lapping the other riders, going by him so fast. And of course, it carries with it a danger because you can tangle with a slower rider who doesn't know you're there and who has a lot less talent and uh, experience than you and suddenly find yourself right in your head. It's happened to a lot of riders. Johnson last year with Storback just in practice. He was taken out. White flag. One lap to go. And Kudrowski breathes a sigh of relief. And Honda would like to see a sweep. They'd like to see Kudrowski take it and then Johnson take it or Stanton and make it a, a Honda sweep here for the first national motocross of the 90s. These riders buy videos and from moto video to study them, to watch and learn a lot. And it's a, it's a way for you to find out how a rider turns and accelerates, handles jumps, handles passing situations. They'll study them. They've got libraries of these. Most of the riders do. It's a good way to relax and, uh, and also better yourself in your riding. Pick up the little nuances that each rider boasts. We're in the final lap of this 125 National Motocross, and now Kudrowski waves to the fans. He's got to feel confident enough to do a little showboating here to wave to the crowd as he heads for the checker, and the crowd gives him the accolades as he goes by. There it is, the checkered flag, and Kudrowski makes history by winning the first National Motocross of 1990. Let's check the official results coming up on the screen now. Should have uh, Cooper in second. I believe he held on for the second. No, it was Bale passing him outside of our cameras, and Matasevich on the Kawasaki is third. And how does defending 125 national champion Mike Kudrowski feel about his inaugural victory in 1990? It feels a little bit better. I had a good start in the second moto, and Bale was behind a little bit. 
and uh, I just you know made sure that he wasn't catching on me and just tried to maintain a good pace and I like it better when he's behind me. How the track hold up? Good. The track was you know really good this morning. There was a couple ruts they left from amateur day, which made it a little bit tougher, and it sort of separated the guys a little bit better. How's this going to affect you throughout the rest of the outburst? Um, I think I'm off to a good start. You know, last year I had a first here, my first national win, and I got it again this year, and it kind of may, might be a repeat of next year. I hope so. And I'm just going to ride like this every weekend. Do you prefer the uh, outdoor motocross to the supercross? Or? Um, both of them are about the same right now. I want to I want to do better in the 250 because I'm going to be moving to it next year. I want to win a couple supercrosses to prove that I can win them. But uh, right now they're about the same. I like them both. And there is Jeff Ward getting set for the second 250 moto. He crashed in the first moto and was taken out with an injured knuckle. He's back, though. Here's Jeff Stanton, number one. Look at the concentration on his face. And there's number 13, Johnson, wants to come back and win this. And number six, Ronnie Tishner, who could play the role of the spoiler. Number three, Jeff Ward, the only man to win titles in all AMA classes, 125, 250, 500, and Supercross. And we're set for the start of the second 250 moto. 1,500 horsepower on the line. They rock it down the long straightaway. And who goes out in front? A very important race, and it looks like, let's check when they come around a Yamaha. No, we've got to change. Another Yamaha goes out in front, I believe. That looks like, I think that is number seven, Doug Dubach. Yes, Dubach in front, Stanton running second. In third place, number eight, Damon Bradshaw. The dust coming up here a little bit now. Later in the day, here at Gatorback Raceway. In northern Florida, there's a picture of mid-pack, but out in front, it looks like it is number... I think that is number eight, Damon Bradshaw in front. Let's check as he comes a little closer. Little pockets of dust being kicked up around this uh, very difficult Gainesville track. There's Stanton, number one. And it looks like Stanton may have taken over the lead. There's number eight, Damon Bradshaw in second. Yes, Stanton is in front. Bradshaw looked good earlier and uh, didn't fade it real fast, but he's still running in the top three. We'll check as he come around. Stanton, we've talked about him. Sherwood, Michigan. National champion. Supercross in 250 class. There's number eight, Damon Bradshaw. He's only a teenager, 17 years old, from Charlotte, North Carolina. This kid's got a lot of guts, so he's a jet skier, water skier, and likes to go hunting in North Carolina when he's not racing. But he's being, uh, whoa, look at this. Bradshaw comes out of nowhere and takes Stanton out, and Stanton's mad, and Stanton takes it back. Holy Toledo. And there's Johnson in third. They are passing it back and forth out in front, and now Stanton pulls away from Bradshaw. But for a moment, Bradshaw had his moment in the sun. Jeff Stanton, number one on the team Honda, the RC250 Honda. There's Damon Bratch on second, number eight, and, and uh, Ricky Johnson in third, number 13. A warm day here in Florida. And Johnson's going to try to make it a little warmer. But Bradshaw comes back. Oh, look at this. Stanton almost goes down, and Bradshaw takes it back. The fans are getting their money's worth here. Stanton almost went down, shut down the throttle just for a moment, and Bradshaw went by him like a snake oil salesman of the night. So it's Damon Bradshaw, the North Carolina native, in front, 17 years old. And Stanton is going to try to take it back from him. Horsepower. These guys are real close. The Yamaha and the Honda. Number eight, it's uh, Bradshaw on the Yamaha. Stanton, number one, on the factory Honda. We should say both, former, both factory bikes. Although, theoretically, they're supposed to be stone stock. There goes Stanton on the outside. As the shadows start to lengthen, it becomes more and more difficult to see the ruts and the holes. And I think that might have been what happened to Stanton when he almost went down a moment ago. But you come from bright sunlight, and it is bright here in North Florida, into the shadows, and you can't see much of anything for just a moment. Bradshaw still in front. Stanton and Johnson battling for second. And there they are right there with Damon Bradshaw out in front. But right now, Ricky's got to pass Stanton to go after Bradshaw. And he goes past him on the inside. But Stanton is not going to back off. Jeff holds on. Who's it going to be in the turn? Johnson. Yep, Johnson holds on to the second place. And there's Bradshaw, number eight. 
the momentum of the battle for second has carried Stanton right on the back tire of Bradshaw. Here's your first three, ladies and gentlemen. Damon Bradshaw, number one, uh, Jeff Stanton, number one, Damon Bradshaw, number eight, and number 13, Ricky Ticky Johnson. Damon Bradshaw, 17 years old. If this were an R-rated movie, he couldn't even get in and see it. You believe that? The kid's only 17 years old, a high school senior from Charlottesville, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. And he is right now leading the best riders in the world in the 250 class, at least in this country. He was. Stanton goes by on the inside. So it's Stanton in front. Bradshaw second. No, Bradshaw going back. Is it? Nope. It's going to be Stanton. Stanton holding on to the lead. Cracking the throttle, that big monster 250 Honda. And holding on to the lead. Now Johnson in third, right behind Bradshaw. It is probably a matter of time till before Johnson passes. Well, holy Toledo, look at this. Bradshaw has gone back in front. This kid doesn't know when to stop. Stanton in second, shaking his head, saying this kid is supposed to back off. And, and Bradshaw says, nee, 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 I'm out in front. Bradshaw, 17 years old in front, Stanton in second place. And Ricky Johnson watching the battle from third. Best race of the day, 250, final moto. And Stanton would like to stop Ricky and make it a, a Honda sweep, but put Stanton in front. And if he win, if, if this point, it'll be Jeff Stanton as the overall winner. Ricky Johnson all over the track in third spot, Stanton in second. Bradshaw, Stanton, and Johnson. Damon Bradshaw in the factory Yamaha, 17 years old. Switched back to Team Yamaha in 1990. He was a 125 East Coast 125 National Supercross champion. So he's got a lot of experience for just being a teenager. Bradshaw. Getting the pressure now from Jeff Stanton. And J Ricky is staying just far enough behind so he can pounce if there's any kind of an opening at all. But as I said a moment ago, the shadows are lengthening here at Gainesville. And when you go from bright sunlight, and it is bright in North Florida, into a, a shadow for just a moment, your eyes have to adjust. And that's where you can have a fall, and these guys are getting tired. Bradshaw goes out in front again. He was handlebar to handlebar with Stanton. He goes back in front. Now Stanton goes to the inside. Bradshaw will try to hold him to the outside, especially going into a turn, because if not, Stanton can, can block, break him, and that's, that will put uh, Bradshaw out. He's got to be on the inside of those turns if Stanton is anywhere near him. Over the jump, and... Uh, Bradshaw apparently has gone off the track and Stanton and Johnson are all alone. Oh, what a tough break for the young Yamaha rider. But the crowd's attention focused on Johnson and Stanton and Johnson's got it. Ricky Johnson for the first time leads the second moto. But Stanton is on him like a cheap suit. He's not gonna let him get out of the way. Johnson looks around the outside. He knows Johnson's gotta be thinking about that broken wrist last year and the, the fall with Storbeck. He does not want to get hurt again. It was put him out for a long time in 1989. So Stanton, carrying the number one plate, has got a reel in his teammate and pass him without both of them going down. Look at how rough that track is getting. The second 250 moto. Johnson won the first one after a tremendous battle with Stanton, and it's a replay, and Johnson back in front for the second moto. Here's Stanton trying it. Try, he does. A beautiful pass in midair. Sets Johnson up. Goes by on the inside. Johnson's not going to do anything stupid. He backs off the throttle for just a moment. Let's Stanton get out in front. And now Johnson reels him back in again. Johnson is trying to get to the inside on a turn so he can block past Stanton. Jeff Stanton, Sherwood, Michigan in front. Both these guys, six foot one and a half. Big guys, big motocross riders. Johnson on the inside, Stanton on the outside. Halfway flag up. Johnson trying to get a leg up on Stanton, and then they win back the other way, and Johnson's got it. He's out in front. Stanton knows he has to beat him to win overall. 
And there is number eight, uh, Damon Bradshaw, back in the fray. Went off the track and came back in. So it is number one, Jeff Stanton, holding on to that lead. Stan was second in the first moto, and he's going to be second in this one, unless he can pass Johnson. Ricky Johnson, number one, or check that, Ricky Johnson, number 13, trying to reel in Jeff Stanton. They are swapping it back and forth like a Hollywood party. In the final half of the second 250 moto, the first 250 national of 1990. Stanton, number one, Johnson, number 13. Here's Johnson again. Johnson to the inside. It's like a, a sword, sword play with Johnson. He will faint, parry, and go right, try to go right around you, and that's exactly what he did. Ricky Johnson in front, back in control. Big crowd here today at Gatorback. Nope, and there is Stanton going back again. The lead switching so many times in this second moto. The rut's getting a little deeper and the shadow's getting longer, which makes it very difficult to read them. And the track is constantly changing. There's Damon Bradshaw back up again, but still out of contention for the overall or even the win here. They are lapping the three-digit riders, three digits denoting less experienced riders. National champion, number one. Stanton took it last year when Ricky went out at this race one year ago, and that was it for Ricky for 19, uh, 1989. Bradshaw wobbling a little bit, trying to get back into the top three. After going off the track earlier. It looks like at this point, Stanton has got this one wrapped up. But Johnson, don't count Ricky Johnson out. Johnson is a very intelligent rider. He will wait until the right moment and then make his move. And in the meantime, he's putting on a good show. There's Johnson to the inside. There's the move. Now Stanton says no. And Stanton holds on to the lead. Johnson on the inside. Going to try to drive Stanton out. He does. A beautiful move. He pushed Stanton to the outside. And that was it. Ricky went by. You've got to wonder physically about Johnson. Wrist last year at this race. That was it for the year. It's taking a tremendous pounding. But right now he's in control. Exciting close action racing here in Florida. And Bradshaw. Bradshaw was third in the first moto. He's running about 11th now. Both these riders very similar physically, both over six foot one. About the same weight, very low body fat percentage on both these guys. They are in incredible shape, and they've got to be to take the pounding they're taking today. On a hot day like this, they'll start drinking water three days in advance, and they will drink a lot of water, literally log, water log themselves to withstand the humidity and the heat here in Florida. Now, complete parts of the track in the shadows, which just makes it that much tougher to get around here. White flag, one lap to go, and that's what Johnson's been looking for. So Stanton, again, here's the scenario. Stanton was second to Johnson in the first moto, and Johnson 
is leading this moto. If Stanton passes him, he will win overall. So Stanton has got to pass Johnson. The second moto, I would judge to be a much faster moto because of the, the speed these guys are, are hitting, the speeds they're hitting. And this is the final lap. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming down to the wire. Is it going to be Stanton or Johnson? And i got to put my money on Johnson. He's just so tenacious. So, so tenacious. He's so hard to pass when he gets in front. The crowd cheering him on, and Johnson is holding onto the lead. I don't know for how long. Stanton is looking for a mistake. The two Honda pilots way out in front. Stanton could be setting him up for a pass. The final now, the final seconds of this moto. The crowd starting to come alive. Johnson blocking every chance he can. Stanton looking, trying to go by, fainting, parrying, trying to go around him. Johnson looks to be tiring just a little bit. He wobbled. Here's going to be the checkered. Is it going to be Johnson or Stanton? It's going to be Johnson. And Stan in midair almost gets him. An incredible picture photograph finish. Look at this. The final feat. Johnson in front. Stanton looking for a way to go around him. Now watch this. Here's where Johnson was wobbling. Look at him almost going down. The front wheel almost washing out. The final turn. The checkered flag ahead. Now watch Stanton's strategy. He goes to the inside, now to the outside. That could have cost him the race right there. Now look at this, in midair. That close. Johnson takes it, Stanton is second. Ronnie Tischner, where was Ronnie, finishes third. Johnson is back. So as my old colleague Larry Myers takes to the victory podium, Ricky Johnson takes the accolades of the crowd and well-deserved are they. He did an incredible job today as Ricky Johnson and Mike Kodrowski take home the bacon in the first race of the 90s, the Gainesville Gatorback opener. It is Johnson and Kodrowski for a Honda sweep.